although this is a dry wine it has rose metal rose metals <laughs> Don't stay up listening to music, children. Hey, tasters. Please allow me a mini rant about condoms before we get on with the wine today. And before I completely lower the tone of the wine tasting conversation, let me lift it up again. Let's begin with Homer and his epic poetry. See, and you panicked. Odysseus was a hero known for a couple of things. Essentially, he won the war for the Greeks at Troy by hiding a bunch of soldiers in the belly of a wooden horse. He tricked the Trojans into bringing the horse and all the enemy soldiers hidden inside it within the city walls. One could credit Odysseus for inspiring a lot of black hat hackers to create a malware that tricks users into trusting it before taking over their computer. Which at least shows that the computer geeks understand the original story. This is more than we can say about the creators of uh, rubber goods in America. Really? Trojan? Really? The Trojan horse was how the Greeks got through the city walls. And once they were within the walls, they took no prisoners. That's the opposite of protection. Maybe go through that branding brainstorm one more time, Trojan. Is this linked to wine? Of course it is. Welcome to my mind, tasters. And speaking of the wine, Clive, <coughs> fetch me my wine. Do you know why this wine is called Canenas? Let me enlighten you. But before we do that, story time should come with a glass of rosé. Let's pour. Rosé wine tasters. Should I serve it in a red wine glass or a white wine glass? What do you think? Let me know in a comment below. But for now, whichever one is closest. Now look at that color. This rosé wine is by Tantalis Winery in Greece and it recalls a famous episode in Homer's Odyssey. That's why it's called Ganenas. But let's find out more about that. So back to Odysseus. Odysseus was the first hero in Western literary tradition to go on a life-changing road trip. Except it was at sea. And wine was crucial in his efforts to get back home. For example, there was that one time when he met master winemaker Maron. In Greek mythology, Maron was a priest of Apollo and the grandson of God of Wine, Dionysus. How fancy! He was also one of the companions of Dionysus. And for those of you less well acquainted with Greek mythology, let me clarify the duties of a companion. Dionysus travelled with an entourage of men, women and minor deities who were perpetually in a state of undress and intoxication. In fact, this is probably where we get the charge of drunk and disorderly. We can therefore assume that Maron knew a thing or two about wine, both in theory and in practice. When Odysseus met Maron, they really hit it off. So Maron, being the master winemaker that he was, he gave Odysseus some wine for the road. You know, for those wine emergencies. We've all been there. As Odysseus put it, Maron filled 12 jars in all, wine sweet and unmixed, a drink divine. 
Soon after this, Odysseus ended up on an island, what is probably modern-day Sicily. Homer describes it as an island populated by vulgar one-eyed giants. Now, that's not my understanding of Sicily based on all my Montalbano episodes that I have watched. But things might have been different 3,000 years ago. Who knows? This one-eyed giant mainly looked after sheep and farted a lot. I'm not making this up. Some of the finest writers of antiquity spent quality epithets trying to capture Cyclops' emissions. Not literally, of course. Anyway, Cyclops Polyphemus trapped Odysseus and his men in a cave and proceeded to eat them one after the other. Odysseus had with him this very special wine given to him by Maron, the grandson of Dionysus. As we are told, Cyclops Polyphemus drank only milk and had never tasted wine before. That's our first red flag that he's nothing but a vulgar beast. So Odysseus and his men gave Polyphemus some of this irresistible wine. He drank too much of it and he passed out. So Odysseus and his men blinded the Cyclops while he was sleeping. The next morning, Polyphemus had to let his sheep out of the cave. So Odysseus and his men hid under the bellies of, of the sheep and held on. The newly blinded Polyphemus was patting the sheep on their backs, looking for Odysseus and his men, but he couldn't find them. They were underneath the sheep. And that's how they escaped and run for it straight back to their ship. Polyphemus screamed at the escaping men, who did this to me? And Odysseus, being a bit of a wit, a bit of a smarty pants, called out, my name is Ganenas, my name is nobody. So Cyclops called to his friend, all the other Cyclops living on the island, and he said to them, nobody has hurt me and the other cyclops said if nobody has hurt you will you stop making such a racket you big baby and nobody helped him and that's how Odysseus and his men escaped and this is why this rosé is called Ganenas referencing this episode in the Odyssey personally there are two things I love about this story a what marks out Polyphemus as an evil monster is the fact that he gets overly drunk and passes out. Ancient Greeks venerated moderation above all things. And second, he never ever tasted wine before. Frankly, that works for me too. That's exactly how I spot bad guys at a party. Is that a glass of milk in your hand? Get out of my sight, you evil fart bag! Anyway, back to the wine. So, this lovely rosé by Tantalis recalls this famous episode from The Odyssey. This sets the bar pretty high. Is this wine delicious enough to save one's life? I haven't tested this premise in real life, but having tasted this wine several times, I'm going to go with plausible. So tasters, this was in the fridge and the right amount of time to, to have the rosé of your choice perfectly chilled is the amount of time it takes you to ramble on about the Odyssey. For more details about the optimum serving temperature of wine however i did make a video about that so maybe click on that link this is a fabulously vibrant rosé it's a bright pink like a maiden's blush in an arcadian landscape but if you fail to encounter many arcadian maidens because you live in the 21st century and all um this is a strawberry sorbet on a hot summer's day.
on the nose you get a lot of rose petals and aromas of powdered sugar and strawberries very fruit forward on the palate lots of red fruit strawberries cherries but the fruitiness is reined in by a bright acidity this is a divine blend of the greek indigenous grape maruthi and the international champion syrah highly recommended i dare say dionysus and maron would approve this wine would pair perfectly with the odyssey in the original greek no less failing that some cheese will do nicely but you know tasters french wines always have uh, pencil sketches of these fine chateaus and greek wines very often reference stories from our mythological past so um, what's your favorite greek myth Please remember to subscribe, leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up. Also, let's expand our technology horizons this week, darlings. There is a button there that says share. Click on that, nothing will explode. Just let a friend know about this video. You'll be happy you did this for me. More importantly, I'll be happy you did this for me. Bye. Cheers. Thank you.